This is an oral history interview with Norton Clark by Brian Carroll, conducted on March 23, 1984, at 21 Endicott Street, Newton Highlands, Mass. This interview was conducted as a part of my oral history project for public histories at Boston College. The general subject, subject areas we will be covering include the general experiences of um, Mr. Clark's life in and around Newton Highlands, his employments, and so on, as well as his views of the neighborhood as a whole. Were you born in Newton Highlands? No, I was born in Newton Corner. Okay. And uh, as far as entertainment around Newton Corner, why, at the time that I was uh, born and brought up, why it was the end of the Depression, uh, well, middle of the Depression to the end of the Depression, nobody had money in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, my family had, on my grandmother's side of the family, they had lost some money in the Depression, and uh, my grandfather at that time was chief chemist of the Boston Navy Yard, so uh, he, in, he in fact uh, was gainfully employed and had a good job. And so, you know, we were all set on that side. On my father's side of the family, my grandfather was the superintendent of Jordan Marsh Company. And you had to be an Englishman, Irishman, or a Scotchman to work for old Mr. Jordan. My grandfather being an Englishman, why he held a job as superintendent for the Jordan Marsh Company. So he was gainfully employed. Uh, and my dad, uh, at that point in life, uh, worked for uh, New England Milk Producers Association in Charlestown. And of course he was just getting started. And uh, so we didn't have a lot of money to, you know, to do a whole lot, but uh, I suppose I did what most of the kids did. Uh, we lived in a neighborhood where all the kids played games. Uh, oh, did we you went over to Farlow Park and picked up horse chestnuts in season. Did you go into the city much? And uh, yeah, we went into Boston quite frequently. As you go uh, more so? And the reason that we were able to go in and out of Boston is that we lived right by the railroad station in Newton Con. Uh, so the railroad was handy to us, and then the trolleys ran from the square, and you could take a trolley in, and uh, it was kind of a Saturday outing in one respect. Uh, you could go to Boston round trip for 27 cents, 10 cents in on the trolley, 17 cents out on the train. And, uh, Where is um, Newton Upper Corner in, in comparison to this neighborhood? Newton Corner Newton. is actually straight Newton. Okay. And Mr. Drucker is trying to rename it Newton Place, but I'm oh, okay. sorry, I, uh, I don't go along with these new names. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, where he is, rightfully, is no Nantum Square. And of course, No Nanum is a section of Newton, but No Nanum right. Square is not in No Nanum. Mm. Um, now, was that area affected a lot when the Mass Pike was built? That was terribly affected, and that's why I live in Newton Highlands. And why? Because why is that? the fact that the toll road went right through my uh, living room, and uh, the automobiles whizzing by made it so that it was, you know, it was uncomfortable to sit and talk to people, and what have you, uh, going through the middle of the house. So uh, we lost our house. And we uh, moved over here. So when did you move and, from? And uh, we moved over here. I came here in 1962. But, With your parents? Uh, no. I lost my parents, both of them, two weeks apart in 1960. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came over here with an old maid aunt who, by the way, has just passed away mm -hmm. uh, about a month ago. And uh, the... Uh, Let's see, I, yeah, I came here in 62. My family, my mother, my aunt, and my uncle were born on Richardson Street in Newton Corner, born at home. Uh, we lived at 29 Richardson Street. The house when I left it was 141 years old and was one of the oldest houses in the neighborhood there. Was that raised during and the construction? That was, yeah. And, uh, 
that's of course where I grew up and uh, going back to entertainment per se uh, my father cut a hole in the fence in the railroad fence behind our house you know and uh, put a screen across it so that I could take and go out in our backyard and I could take and watch the uh, the trains go by well, that's, and, uh, train. that's why I'm a train buff Brian she bothers you just give her a boot uh, so this actually for our, our location in Newton Corner and the proximity of the railroad this is pretty much where I got my contact with the trains and watching them and transportation and that uh, my grandfather before he went to work for the Navy Yard had worked for the West End Street Railway which in later day became the Boston Elevated and of course now they call it the Mass Bay Transit Authority uh, my dad and my grandfather and all they had always had an interest in trains and when we went anywhere my dad was always very willing to stop the car and let me see trains let me see trolleys uh, and that sort of thing and I guess you know my dad kind of pushed along it was something that I was interested in and so he you know he kind of he sparked that yeah he, you know he, he looked out for my interest by the same token uh, if we came upon a fire engine or anything like that why uh, we stopped and we looked at fire engines and uh, we were kind of that kind of a family I'm an only child spoiled like all only children are and uh, so I you know I pretty much had my interest. my own way about some things when you moved from um, Newton Corner to here what do you think first of all what kind of neighborhood was Newton Corner was it an Irish immigrant neighborhood no or was it a absolutely not an Irish immigrant neighborhood. Uh, I lived in amongst the four Protestant churches in Newton Connor. The Roman church was located up near the uh, what is now Jackson Homestead and uh, Which this yeah we yeah to. we had uh, oh our next door neighbors uh, went to uh, our ladies church but uh, basically the rest of our neighborhood went to one of the Protestant churches in Newton Corner, mm -hmm. and uh, so no, definitely it was not an Irish immigrant neighborhood. Um, stopping to think a minute, uh, I would say that there were probably more English and Scotch in the neighborhood than anything. First generation. And uh, no, uh, they would be mostly second generation. And uh, you were second generation. I'm but actually. Your grandfather was from England. Yep, I'm second generation. Uh, <coughs> and let's see, uh, my both of my grandmothers uh, both from the old country. My parents and, are both uh, from Ireland. Uh, well, my grandmother's one was from Scotland, the other one was from England. My grandmother, my uh, father's side of the family, uh, was the mayor of Eastbourne, England, and strangely enough, came over here to Newton to visit his his daughter and uh, took a heart attack and was buried in Newton Cemetery. Hmm. So he never made it back to the old country. So when uh, but you moved from uh, Newton Corner, Newton Corner, and the area that we lived in, despite the fact the railroad was behind our house was much the same that this neighborhood is right here now. Basic uh, The people... Let's say three words. I like it very much. <laughs> uh, would you call it um, very neighborly? Or would you call it... Um, this neighborhood is is first of all do you do you view it as a neighborhood do you think that you belong to it do you think you belong to Newton Highlands yeah I belong a lot more than the others because I was born and brought up in Newton I'm a native okay. and all the other people here as far as I'm concerned are transient all right. and or they're outsiders 
Um, so this is, this, this is a very transitory kind of neighborhood? The, uh, this neighborhood was a long established neighborhood for a great many years and it's only been I would say the last eight or nine years that it's really started to to make a turnover. Why do you think that's? Um, it's a case of the people that were here are of such age that they have either retired and decided to move elsewhere uh, and or they have uh, passed away and so it, you know uh, they've left people? yeah there are a couple of houses up the street here where people lived here almost all their life and uh, they passed away so of course a new family has moved in young festivals um, live in the city or this house here was built by uh, a gentleman by the name of Charlie Jones mm -hmm. and Charlie Jones built most of the houses in this neighborhood he developed the neighborhood this house was built in 1893 I don't know exactly which month the city doesn't have a record as to which month this uh, that water was put into the house but uh, he built the houses next door, across the street, all down and back, and then behind us was originally, uh, the, which is all developed now, that was the Atlas Movie Company. And a great many movies were built there, and one little thing that I can tell you about that is when I lived at Richardson Street, my dad used to tell me about being in movies in Newton and that he had been in... Now this is a movie studio? The Up and back they made movies. Huh. Uh, the Atlas Movie Company. Atlas Movie. Yep. Okay. Now he told me that he used to be in movies. Now my dad was not a person to take and string you along. He had fool and tease but um, the whole family had been in the Newton Amateur Opera Company which was over in West Newton and they'd been in a great many productions and uh, they had written plays and stage shows and a great many have been published. I've got the manuscripts, I've got them right upstairs now. Uh -huh. uh, so, you know, uh, I knew there was some truth to it, but I never thought too much about it. Uh, I worked uh, for the uh, Minneapolis Honeywell and one of the sweepers they had down there, Danny, I can't remember his last name offhand, Danny got to telling me one time that he used to be the electrician for the Atlas Movie Company. Now, where the devil's that, Danny? Oh, he says that was over in Newton Highlands. <laughs> no kidding. I said, you know, my dad used to, this was after my dad had passed away. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, my dad used to tell me about being in movies there. So my grandfather, who outlived uh, almost everybody in the family, uh, I talked to him about it, and, uh, oh, yes, yes, he said, this one, he named off different shows. One of them was Down to the Sea in Ships. Now, there have been many versions of that movie. Uh, the one that uh, he said he best remembered was about 1924 that uh, they were in it, that some of the people from the Newton Amateur Opera Company had been asked to be bit players in the thing. Yeah, so, so uh, when I moved over here, my grandparents came down from New Hampshire, and I showed my grandfather the backyard and around, and he took a look out there, and the aqueduct was through the backyard here, by the way, Kachichuan Aqueduct, and uh, he said, Cripes, he says, I've been here before. I looked and I said, Gramps, you've never been here before. This is the first time you've been down to the house since I moved in. I have been here before, he said. You see the depression, how the aqueduct goes through the backyard? He says, we made movies depicting um, the trenches in France in the First World War. And he says, we've shot guns off of that. And he says, it made a perfect trench. And he went on and on about it. So then I talked to Mrs. Dillaway, who was our next door neighbor. And, oh, yes, she says, I remember when they made movies there. And then Howie Whittemore, the former mayor of Newton, lives right around the corner from us. So I got talking to Howie one day, and how, oh, cripe skip. Sure, I was in movies in the Atlas Movie Company. It's really wild. And then my boss, who was born in the house next door here, 
I got talking to John about it. Oh, he says, Cripes, yeah, he says, we used to take him play in the old studio up on the hill. Is that studio still existing? Well, the studio burned down, got hit by lightning, I believe, and burned down. But in the meantime, I got a hold of Bob Seaway, who knew something about it, and he lives up here on Bowden Street, and Bob got me a reel of film that he had taken, stolen out of the old uh, vault they had up there, years and years and years ago. So I have some of the old Nitrates uh, 35 millimeter movie film, which someday, somehow, I'm gonna, I gotta see if I can get some and run it through a 35 millimeter projector before it all goes to crumbles to yeah. pieces. Yeah, probably worth some money. Actually. So in talking around to different people, I've found that there, there are quite a number of people that still do remember it, That's have some really recollection, but this whole yeah, back I think area... Movie, movie studio or new yeah. Yeah. This whole back area was developed in the early 30s, and uh, so originally the street came down out to the end here, and then came and went up this way here. And my old maps that I have of Newton, they show it as being belong all this. Matter of fact, most of Cold Spring Playground is denoted as being property of the Atlas Movie Company. And that was. The 1920s. And that was during the 1920s, and I don't know exactly when they ceased to exist, but I'm going to tell you that at least by 30 or 31, it was all done. Hmm. And I would assume that they started somewhere right after the First World War. So, uh, That's very interesting. I can tell you that about Newton, uh, Newton Highlands, anyway, as far as the history there goes. Um, let's see. Uh, did the Riverside, do you think the Riverside line made a vast difference when it was built through Newton? Yes. And how Absolutely, do you think it because Elsa Badger, who your buddy is going to interview, has told me how on a Sunday afternoon she and her father and mother and I think her sister traveled from the great metropolis of Brookline, way out to the country of Newton Highlands, and got off out here in the country to find a country home out here, and I want to say that she told me that that was in 1907 or 1908. And that was and, when this was country. Uh, the Riverside line was put through here, I think, in the railroad originally, when it came out to Newton Highlands, did not loop around and go to Warburton and Riverside. Instead, it went directly down to uh, Needham Heights, and from Needham Heights it cut across over to Needham Junction, Medway, Millis, Medfield, and down to Woonsocket. And it was the Boston Hartford Neary Railroad. So it was a, it was a railroad then. And it was a steam railroad. And then in the late 80s, it was decided to uh, make a line, a cut across line from Newton Highlands, and go over to Riverside. And this would then give service to Elliott section of Newton Highlands, or what they call Elliott, and to Warburton and Woodland and back to Riverside so that the trains could come out of Boston, make a loop completely around the city of Newton, and go back to Boston. Mm -hmm. So in fact, you could get on a train at South Station, take a circuit train, as they were known, and uh, you could go via the main line, via Newton Corner, Newtonville, West Newton, Auburndale, Riverside, and then around to Woodland, Warburton, and so on, or you could take and come out the other way, come out through uh, Longwood, Brookline, Brookline Village, Brookline Hills. Right. Beacons Field and so on. Mm -hmm. Chestnut Hill, of course, where you're located. And come around the loop that way. Mm -hmm. And come out here. And then, of course, in 1959, why that all came to a screeching halt. What did they do? And then? they, at that point, the railroad ceased steam, what they call steam railroad service, although being pulled by diesel locomotives. And it was sold to the uh, Massachusetts Transit Authority. So originally the Riverside Line was a railroad in and of yep. itself. Yep. And the T bought it in 59. And the T bought it in 59 and uh, so now there's no convert, more con now, right? converted it to uh, trolley operation. So no, there is no more circuit operation. It's just per se. From it terminates at Riverside 
and it it's on the same track, the same roadbed, and the whole thing. The connection, the steam road connection, well, the New Haven Railroad connection at Cook Street, Newton Highlands, has been severed, and uh, that now is a separate line, which presently is Edaville Bay Colony Railroad, and uh, we are in fact leasing the operation there to the Springfield Terminal Company. Okay, now is that who you work for? And I work for Edaville Bay Colony. Uh, Edaville being the narrow gauge railroad in the Cranberry Bogs and Bay Colony being the standard gauge uh, division of it which now runs most of the lines on Cape Cod and down through Plymouth on the standard gauge what had been the New Haven Railroad. And we are a freight only operation as far as Bay Colony goes. Now, is that uh, strictly um, a Newton, is that a Newton-based railroad? No, it is not. That is, they work out of South Cava, Mass, with the main office being in Lexington. And uh, I work however I'm needed on it, per se. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have 37 years as a conductor at Edaville. But I'm also on standard gauge. I work on Bay Colony as needed in between my other work. So uh, I'm not only interested in the trains, I play real trains and I play model trains because I will sell a full of model trains. Did you ever think of uh, working for the team? Yep, several times. And uh, it's like many railroad jobs, uh, I wasn't old enough at the right time or in the wrong place at the right time, wrong time or whatever. Right and uh, I moonlight for the team in that I do a lot of photographic work for them. In what way? And, uh, all right, uh, they've had the car building program, PCC car building, uh, rebuilding program out to Riverside, which I have photographed the cars and the various processes of being rebuilt. What is a PCC and, uh, car? That's a President's, Con President's Conference car. Are those the uh, kind of cars that, those that you are the see old, the circle in? No, they are the old trolleys as such that run on the Abbeway line now. Hmm. And I they were the cars that were standard on the system for a good many years. Oh, the Abbeway, okay. Cleveland Circle has a, Cleveland, Cleveland Circle, Circle used to have those until yeah, like last year. They all the lines had them. Okay. And that I don't until remember recently. Mm -hmm. um, now they have the library of vehicles. So that uh, I work with them on that program. The Canadian cars that were down here three years ago, the uh, CLRVs, uh, I worked with them all through the testing of those cars from the, from the night they arrived to the day they left. Uh, I have photographed them in, out, and around, have worked with them on the testing of them. The light rail vehicles, the LIVs, which everybody commonly knows now and dislikes, uh, I have worked with those and the testing of them. And, uh, as recently as last Wednesday, was doing photographic work on them. I worked on the out of Watertown on the trackless trolleys. Uh, in particular, the most recent thing is the trackless trolley. They put a Volkswagen gasoline generator into to make it a self-powering vehicle, which was done through government funding and, by the way, was a colossal flop. Uh, and uh, the various cars that come into Watertown for rebuilding, some of the things that they do to try and show uh, what can and can't be accomplished, such as having the side of a car completely stove in and taking another car and cutting the side off of it, splicing it into the good car, and going through the various processes of sure. that. Um, I do basically nothing with rapid transit and I am presently working on a book with another, with a Wabin resident, uh, which is going to be all on commuter rail and I do a lot on commuter rail and I was out this noontime on my lunch hour taking pictures of the new MBTA engine that was just bought from the Burlington Northern Railroad. Could you talk about commuter rail as it came to uh, Newton Highlands a bit? Commuter rail does not affect Newton Highlands in any way, shape, manner, or form. Oh, is commuter it? rail. Okay, I'm yep. thinking of MBTA. But I would like to take and say that 
since I have been on the Mayor's Advisory Committee for Transportation of the City of Newton, that I was rather astounded to find that the young lady that heads it, who is not a Newton resident, but was a New Yorker, uh, is head of such a position in Newton and did not know, in fact, that commuter rail even ran in Newton. And this bombed me out to think that uh, she did not know such a thing even ran or existed in Newton. And uh, I told her, I said, hey, how about commuter rail down in Newtonville and West Newton and Auburndale? What commuter rail? Standard railroad trains, commuter trains, of what? They have such a thing in Newton? Well, obviously, she lives on the south side of Newton, where a lot of the, as I call them, the newcomers live. And uh, she just never goes to that side of Newton to see there is such a thing. But she now has been over there, and she now recognizes it, and is working uh, with me to reinstitute Newton Corner as a station stop, which will serve the group of property in Newton Corner and make it a lot easier and take some of the buses off the street. When I, when I asked you how, um, how uh, you know, the MBTA had changed Newton Corner, Newton Highlands, uh, you kind of skirted that question. I was wondering if you could get back to that a bit. Um, do you think it really added to the population of the area? making it more accessible than it made it more it's made it more accessible to people in both directions coming and going I don't really so the line was out here think, in 1907 right? oh the line was out here in in uh, 1848 that originally really? the line was built out here oh. and uh, I had a fellow here last night who works for the T's an operator, he is now writing a history of the nothing but the Highland Branch, of the Riverside Line. And uh, he went through my negatives and pictures to see what he can use on it. Hmm. And I'm pretty sure he said it was 18, 1848 that it initially was built out here. But really, um, I don't think that, it is, that the line out here has changed the uh, population, uh, the growth of the city, you nor know, has it changed the way that the city runs or rides or what have you. It has made it uh, much more accessible for people that work in town to get on a trolley and just zip in town. It does, in fact, end up in a different location than what the train did. The train went to South Station, the trolley goes to Fox Street Government Center and Leachman. Um, so, in fact, you can take the green line here, uh, and you can go right through Boston and come out the other side, go to Leachman, when they're doing it right now. They've, they've, just, they've uh, just cut the service back so that you're going to have to take a shuttle from Government Center to go to uh, Leachman. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, can't, I, I can't really see that it's made a change in things. Okay. Um, many of the people here uh, that live in Newton Highlands do work in Boston. I I don't know what percentage it would be, but it's it's so a pretty much. good percentage. Um, it makes it. Uh, you can think a lot of people take the tea? Yeah, they they definitely they take the tea. Uh, it makes it convenient uh, for people going to Boston College uh, to be able to commute in, and it's a fair walk. I'll admit up Hamlin Street. Or Hamlin Street. But they do do it. Uh, my next door neighbor, who is a professor down there, that's the way he went because he can't drive a car. Mm -hmm. So he'd walk up here and take the trolley and get out and walk up, go to school. And uh, of course, a lot of the kids here that uh, go in town, father, that uh, they go into Longwood and they go to Simmons okay. and some of those places. and. Uh, you know, it's convenience for kids to commute back and forth instead of having to live out. Mm. Okay, let's try to switch um, switch focus here a little bit, get a little more history. Uh, now, obviously, you were what ten to ten to fourteen years old during World War II, or thereabouts. Huh? Yeah. And do you remember? Could you remember anything about that as far as it affected this area? 
you remember any major industries or how industries sure. were converted or and then reconverted? Well, back I back? remember Franklin Delano Roosevelt declaring war on Sunday afternoon, December the 7th. Mm -hmm. uh, you were 10 years old. I knew where I, I was uh, at the time. No, I was eight years old, eight years old at the time. Um, the during the war uh, in Newton Connor in the square beside the bank building there was a big screened in area for everybody to throw their scrap metal into god there were loads of things I'd love to have carted out of that thing and taken home stuff that today uh, priceless antique toys uh, all, just all kinds of things that you wish to dear god nobody had thrown away at the time Yeah. Uh, my family were always savers, so they only got tin cans from us. Uh, the uh, Raytheon Company in Newton, of course, uh, really became, came into being. Uh, they went into uh, war production, radios and that sort of thing. Uh, radar ranges were developed there and also tested on the New Haven Railroad. Uh, but uh, I can't really think of Was there one too many history? things in in around Newton. Newton. Newton at that time was not as industrial as it is today because over between Newton Highlands and Newton Upper Falls on Needham Street, the biggest industry over there was New England Concrete Pipe, and next door to it was a defunct fireworks plant, which was Marston Wells Fireworks Plant which my father uh, was detailed to go over there and he got blown up. The city took the land and they burned the fireworks and uh, the fellow that did it, did it didn't know what he was doing threw some dynamite on the fire and my father ended up in shell shock. Prevented him from being in the war. Mm -hmm. uh, next to that was the uh, Sarko Lowell plant which had uh, made uh, castings and uh, knitting machinery and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Sarko Lowell today, of course, is St. Regis paper, and many of the buildings are actually even gone, and your Marshall's Mall is in where the Marston Wells Fireworks plant was, uh, and where part of uh, the Sarko Lowell mills were. So that's Arsenal and Marketplace now, right? No, Arsenal Marketplace oh, is in Marshall. Watertown. No, this is Marshall, Marshall's Mall. Oh, okay, right, up I here. Now, it wasn't until really after the war years that, that, that Needham Street got developed. And your little industries and things that are there now, they're all brand new from after the war. Oh, I know what you're talking um, about. McDonald's, of course, is right. brand new, but exactly that would be one thing that you would probably use the landmark Callahan's right, right, right. restaurant is another there's a transmission place there uh, oh Boston desk company is new uh, National Lumber Company is new uh, up where National Lumber Company is there was a Highland grain mill uh, I had uh, pet rabbits and we used to go up there and buy the rabbit food at Highland grain mill now that wasn't that many years ago that there was the grain mill there and it was a big grain elevator uh, there were still people around, uh, well, down to the Webster estate. They still had cows and they bought uh, mash and various things uh, for their chickens and the cows and hay and straw. Um, during the war, I do remember that uh, there was a uh, family in Newton Corner that uh, bought a horse and they had a horse and wagon. Um, I want to tell you them the family were the Hansons, Roger Hanson as I recall, uh -huh. and they used to go around Newton Corner in their horse and wagon. Um, there was an old lady that lived right over here, Mrs. Jordan, that had an electric car and she got the electric car out and used to drive around in it uh, during the war. Uh, hmm. There was another family up on Franklin Street, Newton Corner, that had an electric car. Uh, can't tell you the name off the top of my head, but uh, that was used during the war. Um, there was a 
where Republic Shoe is in West Newton today, that was the American Steam Auto Company. And that was run by a gentleman who was a little bit eccentric, lived over on Quinnabuquin Road, I believe, in Guadalupe. And I can remember going over there and watching him convert gasoline automobiles to steam. And one of the most fantastic cars I remember seeing him convert over was a, a 1940 Packard. And taking the engine out and put a steam, con, uh, steam condensing engine in it. Hmm. Uh, it had a range of about 250 miles, about the same as a Stanley steamer does. Uh, and uh, he did steam. this. He did this to uh, uh, n uh, not a great many, but some automobiles. Uh, people had. Uh, I don't know. Who, I don't even know who the owners of the cars were. But I can remember my dad taking me over there and uh, seeing it. Uh, there, uh, L.O. Nichols had a bag mill down down at the uh, down at Bemis, which is known as uh, the Vanta Company down in uh, known as used to make underwear, and they made it all through the war. Right. We used to go down there. I used to buy seconds. <laughs> uh, but not a, I, not a lot of. Not a lot of industry or heavy industry in Newton. Um, How about specific changes that were in during the war, or in, in this neighborhood or Newton Corner in particular since you grew up there? Was there anything that sticks out in your mind as far as something related to the war, like blackouts? Or yep. Uh, my aunt and the gal next door, the two of them, I remember they spent weeks over at the uh, Martin Tormey's S.O. gas station painting headlights for people. We had to paint the top of the headlight out. And I can remember Caddy Rogan uh, worked with my Aunt Bucky. Uh, the two of them, I forget what they charged people, but they painted headlights. You come in for your gas, and while Marty was filling you up, they painted your headlights. And uh, I remember that. Uh, I remember that the old telephone building in Newton Corner was used by the Army. Uh, they were housed there. They had a. Uh, they also had barracks down on the Charles River, and they set up anti-aircraft guns. Right on the Charles uh, River. Right along the Charles River to protect the Watertown Arsenal. Wow. Uh, and they had right. barracks down there. They used. We used to go swimming. Are there still installments down, down there next to the river? Maybe. No. No. I can show you where they were. Uh, because uh, the trees were cut down, and I remember my grandmother, oh, she was just so upset because there were some trees on a knoll on the Watertown side. She used to love to go and sit there in evenings, and I'd sail my boat down in the river. I had a little sailboat about yay big, and that was, that was uh, kind of the fun thing. Uh, you know, during the war, you couldn't do a heck of a lot, and... Uh, we used to take and we'd go down to the river and I'd take my sailboat and on a long string and let it go out into the river and, and uh, or my aunt would take a bunch of us kids down there or my dad would take us down and, uh, big deal I, you know that was entertainment sure uh, my kids today say well, what did you do at night well hell we took we played kick the can or blind men's buff or hide and seek around the neighborhood that sort of thing, and that was all through the the war years. It's it's so um, hard for me to conceptualize anti-aircraft batteries on the Charles River. The telephone building that the uh, Army took over as barracks later became the city of Newton Morgue. Strangely enough, I went to work for Dolcam Corporation, who were the forerunners of uh, Minneapolis Honeywell, and uh, I worked in the very building that had been the morgue. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what was your I first job? First job I ever did. First job I, I got out of school as a co-op student and I uh, I worked uh, at Bettinger Enamel Company doing sign layouts mm -hmm. and uh, then I left them and I went to work for Dolcam, which became part of 
uh, Honeywell and I did uh, work on gyros and experimental work in experimental labs. Did you ever work in Newton Highlands? Nope, no. never. Newton Highlands was kind of a far out place, way off from Newton Corner. Right. Uh, I knew where it was. We occasionally visited over here. Came to the Brigham's up here, Newton Highlands. Was, was, it, now was, was that the, the home of the original Brigham's? That's what I, that's what I thought. And not too many years ago, we got a petition together and fought like hell to try and save it. Now we're going through a thing where we've just lost the Hyde School. Uh, Newton that's right. I Newton, Highlands at, Newton Highlands at this point is getting to be a loser. Uh, In what way? Well, all of, the, all of the good old things that we have had and the people are used to, we are losing. Now, in particular, that Brigham's, is, that's the one, where is that Brigham's now? Well, the Brigham's now is in, uh, there's a bread and chocolate or something like that in there. It's a delicatessen. But it's uh, not Brigham's anymore. It's not Brigham's anymore. And the ice cream factory or store, whatever we've got, won't even come close to a, won't even, isn't even worth talking about. Uh, Do you remember Brigham's? Clearly? Absolutely, I remember Brigham's. I remember it very well. Why don't you tell me about it? Uh, it used to be well, a big thing to go there, first of all. I'm well, sure. first off, it was uh, the original Brigham's store. They made the ice cream there. Um, Brigham's ice cream was always, and even today, is rated as some of the best ice cream around as far as store ice cream goes. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just outstanding. They had sugar cones. Anywhere else you went and bought ice cream, they had the Dan or wafer cones. Brigham's ice cream was basically the same price as everybody else's, or five cent cones and ten cent cones. Um, but it was good. Uh, it was an interesting place to go into. Uh, later in years, Brigham's and Dorothy Muriel's, the bakery stores, got together and uh, they divided up half of the store here in the Highlands and made it into a Dorothy Muriel's bakery. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost that. Uh, that's, of course, because Dorothy Muriel's was phased out. But. Uh, one of the things that we tried and tried to say was the Brigham's ice cream, and it was... Um, when was that established? Brigham's ice cream was established, I think, in 1920... 22 or 23, somewhere around and there. this was about. the original This was the original one. And uh, we lost it. I guess five, six years or more ago at this point. And currently, of course, is the Hyde School. Now, my wife works at the Hyde School. My kids have all gone to the Hyde School. And what are they proposing to do? And that? they're proposing to uh, make it into a, uh, I guess, a place for the elderly or the handicapped or what have you. Because there isn't enough Which students or something? My wife just says it's the handicapped. <laughs> and uh, we're not too happy about that. Uh, we're fortunate that our children have all managed to go through the Hyde School. It's very close to And yes, the Hyde School is in right in the middle of Newton Highlands. It's, it's an integral part of, the, of Newton Highlands. Uh, I think most of the people that live here have moved to Newton Highlands. This, is, this has been kind of a drawing card. Um, the stores, the churches, and the Hyde School. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also kind of convenient and uh, unlike some of the other sections of Newton where the the schools aren't right within the immediate village proper, um, the Hyde School is and a great many of the activities and things that have happened here in the Highlands are involved or revolve around the Hyde School. And now through dirty politics and other things, and uh, without calling anybody names or anything like that, why we, uh, we have basically, we have lost the school. Mm -hmm. And 
That's is it definitely it's, it's going to be converted? Well, who knows at this point? Uh, there's so many hanky pank things going on with the school committee and uh, the present person that calls himself mayor that uh, it's know. just, yeah, we don't know. This interview is continued on side two at the 65th foot and it runs through the 344th foot. We don't know if it's going to stick How long has it been? How long has it been? It's been over a hundred years. Oh, boy. And this is, you know, this is another thing. It's uh, it's a school that's been here. What school did you go to? Over a hundred years. I went to the Underwood. I went to the Bigelow, both of which still exist. And I went to Newton High School and I went to Newton Trade School. And, of course, Newton High School, Newton Trade School doesn't really exist as such. It's now Newton North. In Newton Vocational School. Mm -hmm. uh, and do you remember uh, the high then? The high then? Oh yeah, I remember the high then. Were they rivals? And, uh, no, they were not rivals. Uh, I don't think any of the schools in Newton were really rivals per se. Uh, the junior high schools and all did play sports one against the other, but not being a sports person, mm -hmm. like, I. I can't really say. say. Mm. Uh, as old as I am, I've never seen a professional baseball game. But uh, what, what do you that. want to know about trains and trolleys? <laughs> Anything, right? You know? Sure. Uh, what else can I tell you at this point? Well, uh, uh, let's see. So about ten more minutes. Let's, uh, I'm sure we can get a question from here. Uh, how did Newton Highlands get its name, anyway? Highlands. I would assume that Newton Highlands got its name by the fact that Newton Highlands is high. Um, is it above? It is. I don't know what the elevation is here, but uh, as you come up Walnut Street from Newtonville, you are working your way uphill all the way up. Uh, one of the teachers down at the Hyde School lives in Newtonville. He pedals to the Hyde School in the morning and he says I'm in good shape in the morning to pedal uphill to the Highlands and he says I don't have to pedal nearly as hard to go home. And this is very obvious. Um, on the railroad there's a very ruling grade coming up into the Highlands and once you leave Newton Highlands to take and come around and go up into Wabin, uh, we've got uh, a pretty good grade from Newton Highlands Station to Elliott Station. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a difference of some 40 odd feet, which uh, has come up in less than a mile's distance. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it would seem logical, anyway. So I, I assume that uh, that's how it got its name. Of course, Newton Upper Falls, which is next to the Highlands, is upper, and the water on the Charles River Falls to the Lower Falls. Right. So, uh, you know, that's kind yeah, of the way it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's strange the way we're located here. And the uh, terrain of Newton now to the kind of the north west of us here is West Newton Hill. West Newton Hill is pretty good sized. On a clear or fairly calm day, we can take and listen to trains coming down through Wellesley Farms all the way down into Riverside and you can listen to them down to just the other side of Auburndale and then you lose them. Mm -hmm. 
but then you pick them up again in the valley down in the Newtonville. And so, so after they go by, we, you, we can hear them, and then we can hear them disappear, and then we can hear them again as they're going along. I swear that I've heard at, at night on a clear, on a, um, you know, when it's quiet and it's late, that I hear trains at BC, but I've never been able to figure out where what I hear them from. Now, we also, we hear the trains at Needham, mm. and that's no problem, because they're right over here, and there's nothing I've always thought that it, it. that it was the Riverside line that I heard, okay. screaming by, you know, in between uh, Cleveland Circle and... and uh, oh, you'd, you'd hear the cars there, conceivably. Yeah. yeah, down behind the pumping station. Right. Oh, sure, very definitely. Uh, but... Uh, you kick it. Now listen, there's a jet plane going over. This used to be the, the jets used to go over here every night. And the old lady that lived next door, she used to call the police department every damn night. They always went through at the time the news was on. They always went through at the, at the wrong time all the time for her. Uh, I'm sure it isn't her calling, constant calling, because they don't, they don't actually go over the house here anymore. Why did they in do rare, that? Very rare instances. Why, why was it like that? Well, they changed the landing padding, landing pattern in Boston, mm -hmm. so that they don't come in over here now the way they used to, or take off over here. But, well, they used to howl up something fierce. Really? And, uh, mm -hmm. You just, if you're on the telephone or you're watching TV, you just had to take and wait until it went by. Oh, is that fair? Yeah. Uh, oh. But uh, that the bypasses kind of both ways except in rare instances here. Yeah. So, you know, uh, again, we're, we're fairly high up. Hmm. Well, um, what do you think is going to be the uh, future of this neighborhood, especially with the loss of such things as Brigham's and the Hyde, and do you think it's going to retain its character as a neighborhood, or do you think it's just going to kind of well, what the loss, the, the loss of Brigham's, uh, that is, you know, that's not going to make or break anything. But the loss of the school is going to. Loss of Brigham's was the first. Step. Yeah, the loss of the of the school is really going to take, and that's going to change things. How it's going to change them at this point, I don't know. There's a there's a lot of an awful lot of talk around the neighborhood. Would most people in um, this neighborhood have gone to that school or go to yes. that school? Yes. And so in that and way... Many of the, the many of the old residents here have all been to that school. So I, definitely... I can think of scads of them, and I'll bet you else is one of them that went to it. And, uh, of course, when they had the fire in the old original building, that was the beginning of the end right there. And the... I hate to say it, for all the years my dad was on the fire department and in fire prevention, I never saw anything handled so horribly as that fire was. They literally had everything set up outside the school and watched it burn and did not put water on the fire. Now until what was this? This was on the original, the old Hyde School building, which is right beside the present building that's there now. Mm -hmm. But they just, they just didn't do anything. They watched it. When did that happen? And that was three years ago. Oh, really? Is that yeah. recent? So, the new Hyde School? Well, there the are two school buildings. Both old. Side by side. One's old. One's in the young. 20, one was built in the 20s, one was built when Methuselah was <laughs> created. Right. And uh, that was, I had a daughter in fifth grade. Yeah, fifth grade. I think I remember that time. And she just stood there and cried watching all her things being burned while the fire department stood there and didn't put water on it. And I know that my dad would roll over in his grave if he was ever around and saw the way that was handled. Yeah. It was almost as though it were deliberate, don't do anything, mm -hmm. let it go. Because they had tried before to close the school. And, uh, so I don't know. I maybe I'm prejudiced. I probably am, but uh, I've been to too many fire things with him. I've been involved in fire prevention and 
his lectures, his talks, he wrote for three newspapers. Uh, I had fire prevention crammed down my throat. Uh, I do know something about firefighting and fire engineering. Uh, I just stood there and I was, uh, I was livid. Mm -hmm. How many, um, what's the fire protection around this neighborhood, is it? Not as good as it used to be. It's still good. And we're fortunate that we do have a station that's just on the other side of the turnpike. How many stations service do <coughs> the work There were 10 in the city, and we're down to uh, 8 now. Is there one And they've, consoli there? they've consolidated companies and what have you. And I would say Newton Highlands basically has, we have good coverage. Um, I would say that uh, between the time that the alarm is sounded, uh, there wouldn't be a lapse of more than three minutes between the fire department leaving the station and getting here. Mm -hmm. uh, they burned the house across the street. Kids had fireworks. They set their own house on fire. And uh, I would say it was about three minutes time. We had good coverage. The police coverage in Newton is, I would say, relatively good compared to many places. Uh, I had a situation where I needed them. I needed them in a hurry. I picked up the telephone, told them what the problem was, hung the telephone up, went to the front door, and they were coming around the front. And uh, so. The fire and police protection is good in the city, but how is how much is the uh, police protection needed around here? Is it, in other words, how good is the a, a fair amount. We we were broken into this last summer. Mm -hmm. uh, there've been a lot of breaks in this neighborhood. But generally, it's a good neighborhood. It's a, basically it's a good neighborhood. Uh, we were unusual the break that we had here in that uh, we didn't lose anything. It was kids, curious see what we had. Uh, it was very unprofessionally done. Uh, but uh, I've been in the house here and had somebody try and break in. We had the same thing. Uh, which kind of gave me a start. Oh, okay. and, uh, but we did scare him off. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, uh, Mr. Churchill up the street here, the, uh, a couple of days later, she saw the assume same persons uh, try attempting to break into the house next door to her, call the police, by God, they got them. And they got a lot of the stuff back that had been stolen, but I don't know. It's one thing I don't like about Newton is that all the house breaks they've had, they put it in the Newton paper, and everybody in Roxbury buys a copy of the Newton paper and knows where to hit. And if you pick up a Newton paper, you can see exactly what neighborhood's being hit and many places are being hit more than once, several times. Uh, I don't think they should take and publish it. Mm. No way, no how do I think they should publish it that uh, there's been a break at such and such an address mm. or in such and such a neighborhood. Uh, if they want to make a list at the end of the week and say there have been so many burglaries, so many fires, so many this, so many that, fine. But right. I don't think they should advertise it. So you lived in, you've lived here in this neighborhood since 62, did you say? Yeah. Or 60? 62? 62. And um, do you feel as if it's become a more centralized or more neighborly or neighborhood-centered place since then? Or do you feel because of the things like the closing of the hide that it's... It's been a, it's been a funny neighborhood in that uh, most of the old people are gone. And now I've become one of the old people. Uh, the families that have moved in, in the snowstorm of 78, mm -hmm. blizzard of 78, everybody talked to everybody. And as soon as the snow melted, why, uh, so did the friendliness. Uh, everybody went back to being the crabby New England selves. Yeah. Uh, so it isn't a very but clicky kind of place. Though, right? You know, there's not a lot of... Uh, yeah, there are some sections in Newton Highlands that are very clicky. Uh, where everyone knows everyone. 
Yeah, yeah. They look uh, like in particular Oak Street, right, Oak uh, Terrace over here. The whole, that whole street, they're all very close, right. extremely close. Um, around here, uh, not nearly, the new people that have moved in, they're outsiders and they just, I don't know, they're just not like the old people. They, uh, I don't know if someone would turn to and give you a hand if you needed it or not. Mm -hmm. um, we have neighbors that have moved in next door to us who uh, we thought were going to be uh, very extremely friendly. And uh, they have turned right around and almost totally isolated themselves from everybody in the neighborhood. Mm. And uh, they don't associate with anybody in the neighborhood. They don't talk to anybody in the neighborhood. Uh, and they've become hermits, so to speak. Are there a lot of things in this neighborhood in particular that would draw people together, such as a particular church or a community organization or something? Yeah, the Hyde School. The Hyde School. Yep, there are enough kids here to take and make it so that this the whole Newton Highlands evolves around the Hyde School. And, and is despite there another high the school there? No. There's just one high school? There's two high schools, north and south. And because of the population and the people that live on the south side of the city, which I do now, my children go to the north side. And I cut them down there every day and drop them off. did the high off. school close? The high school didn't close. Oh, you're shaving it. No, you say high school or hide school? Hide. The hide closes this coming June. Okay. Is that not, what, what grades are those? That's one through six. Okay. That's the confusion. Okay. I thought it was a high school. The junior high school closed, which was the weeks. And those kids now uh, have either got to go over here to Meadowbrook and or they've got to go down to Bigelow or what have you. I take my kids down there for a day in Newtonville. I took my daughter down to Newton North High School. Uh, the people on the south side of the city are newcomers to the city of Newton. They are very clicky. If you aren't one of their particular race, you're out of luck. Yeah. And you can take and let this thing go and say, I'm an Archie Bunker. But that's how it is. Mm -hmm. And we found that by moving our kids and taking them to a school where it wasn't as clicky, that we went from the competition of dress and the competing of class and being a DNF student to being an honor student, who we didn't have to compete so. Right. And so this is another reason for taking our kids down to Newton North. And we've got the bus service up here at the end of the street so the kids can hop on the bus and they can get down to Newton North and go today. Right. No problem at all. But for the so most part, I have to go to work that way, so I drive them in. So you think the hide is definitely something that's going to hurt this neighborhood? Definitely? I think it's definitely going to hurt it. Very definitely I do. Uh, the way the kids are going to have to be redistricted, some of the kids are going to have to walk over a mile to school. Little kids shouldn't have to walk over a mile to school. Not when they live right across the street from the school. And, and, plus and there are many little kids that little live right too. within within a quarter of a mile of the school. Right. Half a mile at best. So it's central right to the neighborhood. Yep. It's very central. And I'm I'm very sorry to to see that the school committee is that short sighted. Also this particular school they made one of the heat survey. Uh, using the ultra red ultra or ultraviolet, yeah. uh, I don't know just exactly how it works, but they have a helicopter that go over it and what have you. And the Hyde School has proven to be a very efficient, heat efficient situation, whereas some of the others aren't. And so, of course, the heat efficient one, they close. The others, you know, well, I hope it's that kind of. Battle. I would like to hope that that there is some hope. But uh, nonetheless, we're going to stay here in the Highlands. Do you uh, enjoy it, basically? I enjoy it. It's been a good experience. Uh, 
I feel it's a good location. I'm close to most of my work. Uh, we've got adequate, adequate transportation to and from Boston. Uh, we've, we're close enough to Route 9 and Route 128. Mass Toll Road. They didn't like it because they took my house, which was mortgage-free in a 15-room house on a four-house lot. Uh, but uh, uh, so, you know, basically, it's been good. Uh, my wife works for the city in the school lunch program. My father worked for the city. Uh, my uncle uh, worked uh, for the Stanley brothers who made Stanley steamers. Uh, they're from Newton. Uh, I've worked in the city here. So it's just uh, a lot of ties. Yeah, it's got a lot of ties. I, I think uh, I think we'll stay. I don't like the way things go at times, and I guess you know I'm not alone in that respect. Yeah. Everybody has their ups, downs, and what have you. Sure, yeah. So okay. That was very good. I think it was very valuable. Well, hopefully, you know.